All right, in this video, we'll take a look at the Vivaro Xilinx's Vivaro software and how to program the Basis 3 board. Uh, this video will focus on setting up the Vivaro project. And now, uh, in the last video, we looked at the Vivaro bo uh, Basis 3 board. And I mentioned there were 16 switches and 16 corresponding LEDs directly above those switches. In this video, what we'll do is we'll try to set up a project where uh, the following behavior is observed. So what we want to do is when the switch is turned on, so the switch is moved up, we want the LED to be turned off. When the switch is down, we want it to turn on. So when it's uh, when it is up, we want it off. When it is down, we uh, we want the LED to turn on. Okay, so that's a behavior we want to emulate uh, in this particular uh, video. So for that, let's go and launch our uh, Xilinx uh, Vivaro software first. All right, so the first thing we'll do is uh, once you've installed the Vivaro software, uh, all right, here is the Vivaro 2018.2. This is the one we'll use. There's Vivaro HLS, which is called High Level Synthesis, that we'll not be using for this particular class. Uh, so let's double click inside this, and we'll, this will launch the Vivaro uh, HLX edition uh, software. Okay. Uh, so here's the overall uh, view of the Vivaro 2018.2. Uh, uh, we'll create a new project. You can do that by File, Project, New, or you can just from the quick start say Create Project. So let's do that. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind that whenever you create a project is to find a location where the entire path does not have a space in it. Okay. So for example, if my path name uh, had uh, a space in the folder name or the file name, uh, there could potentially be some issues. So let's try to uh, make sure that all the paths uh, are basically free uh, of spaces. So I'm going to create a new folder, create a project in my uh, Z drive. So let me go up here in this PC. I'm going to go to here, select. And then under there, I'm going to create a new folder called uh, Vivado Test. All right. Next, I'll call it RTL Project. So we're going to set up a RTL project, which basically means we'll be describing uh, the register transfer level, or in other words, we'll be describing in terms of Verilog what the project is going to be. So let's do that. Uh, we'll be need to create a file to describe the behavior uh, that we want. So let's create a file. It'll be created in the hardware description language called Verilog. We'll go into more details about Verilog in a different video. But for now, let's call it my switch, my SW LED uh, file. Okay, so we'll say OK. Uh, it's been added right there. Uh, so it's, let's say next. Uh, we'll add the constraints and come back to what the constraints are in a little bit. Uh, next, let's go to, so when we get to the default part uh, portion of this particular window, we want to select our board. Our board is the basis 3 board. So here is our basis 3 board. Select this uh, particular board. Uh, say, make sure it's highlighted and then say next. So. We've selected the default board is basis three now. You want to verify that before you conclude, uh, uh, and then hit finish. So this is going to initialize everything that's necessary to get your project up and running. So once this is set up, so you'll get a window that basically has a summary. And the first thing it's going to ask is, okay, we we said that our project file was called my SWLED. It's basically saying, what is the input? to this project. Well, let's call our input a switch. Okay. And what is the output? An LED. So you can write down LED, uh, make the direction to be an output. In fact, you can do this later once you set it up as well if you make a mistake here. So switch and LED. Say OK. All right, so doing that, it created this under design source, it created my switch LED file. So let's double click inside that. Uh, this is a Verilog description of my switch LED. Uh, the input is a switch, output is an LED. Uh, Verilog, every, this basically creates a black box 
the module description basically creates a black box. So essentially what it's creating right now is a black box called my SWLED with an input port called SW and an output port called LED. There's nothing inside this box. Okay, so that's what we have. So, so this is what we have, right? So the, when we declare a module, is when we declare a module, uh, that is essentially what we have is my SWLED is the name right here. My SWLED, that's the name. So essentially this creates, so my SWLED, that creates a box, this box right here. Input SW basically creates an input port called SW. And output called LED, output LED creates this. Now we have nothing inside there, so module and end module. Basically, it's created this. Now, what we want inside here is that logic that will basically say that when the switch is high, the LED is low, and when the switch is low, the LED is high. Well, it sounds like the LED behavior is opposite of the switch behavior. So in other words, we're going to use the NOT gate to do this. So in basic Verilog, we can, uh, we'll do that by basically saying, let's say, NOT U1. The output is LED and the input is switch. Okay. We'll do this and we will hopefully have described that behavior. So the not logic. So let's see if uh, this act, what, what this produces. So uh, under RTL analysis right here, so in Vivado, once you've added that, we basically try to fill in inside that box. Uh, so let's see what happens here. So let's open the elaborated design, say OK. And let's see what it really created. Okay, well, I'll give you, uh, it'll take maybe a second. And it's trying to create, figure out what's actually inside my box and what hopefully. All right, so it's basically saying it's created this switch. A NOT gate, we know what a NOT gate does. It does the exact opposite behavior and the output goes to the LED. So we've set that up, right? We've set that up. So, okay, according to the, wave, uh, so the schematic we saw that resulted from this, looks like what is happening is actually correct. But is it really going to work? We need to make sure that that actually, uh, we actually uh, test it, right? So in order to do that, let's create a simulation waveform. So in order to do a simulation waveform, we'll create something called a test bench. And we'll see how to proceed with a test bench in our next video.